So I've already said what my name is, Jamie McDougall. Everybody knows my name sign. Right. So I'm a psychologist and I've been working with deaf people for over 40 years. The language that I started to use, that I was born with, is ASL. Because as many of you know, my parents were deaf, and I grew up in the Ottawa community. But I'm most proud to say that I'm also a senior. So we're all, uh, a lot of us in here are seniors. <laughs> so I'm here to give the first presentation on the topic of mental health and wellness. And there's going to be a special focus with deaf seniors. I want to talk about something I'm calling a lived experience. How seniors, how we seniors, how we experience life. And I'm going to give you some of my own ideas about this. Then I'm going to talk about mental health for everybody, for deaf people, for hearing people. But there's going to be a special focus on mental health issues for seniors. Then I want to talk about this new idea, this new word that we use a lot called wellness. Well-being. What does it mean to feel good, to feel well, to have a positive outlook on life? Even though we know that there are many things that happen out there that are not very nice, and sometimes things happen to us personally that don't feel very good too. You may have a health problem, you may lose friends. Many issues are out there that we all face as seniors. I want to say right away that I don't have any magical solution to all the problems that we experience in daily life, or even the special problems that we face as seniors. And there is much about mental health how we feel that nobody really understands. We don't really completely understand the human mind, the human spirit, and the whole human condition. But what I am going to try to do, and I promise you, that I'm going to give you my honest opinion, what I think about these ideas, and it's based on my own experiences and what I've learned in my profession as a psychologist. I know I can't walk in your shoes. I can't experience what you've experienced in your life, good things, bad things. And I know that being deaf gives you a special insight into what it means to be deaf. And only you can say what that really means. And I hope when we come to the end that you'll share some of your own experiences so that others can benefit. I'm thinking here of younger deaf people, people who are young and deaf. They can really benefit from hearing your stories, how you've experienced life some of the good things, some of the bad things. I'm hoping this is a journey we can all take together. Everybody's experience, everybody's way of looking at things, everybody's perspective, we all count. We're all important. So, what does it mean to be a senior, this word senior? Does it mean you're old? What does old mean? Are you old when you're 55? 60? 65? 70? 75? 100? Where does old start? Who decides to call us seniors? 
Why are we called seniors? Is it the government? Is it because we get the old age security pension? Or we get a discount at a store? Why not just say you're old? Why say senior? The word senior, I think, has a special meaning. It doesn't mean you're getting older. It means you have some status. It means that you're somebody. You've lived life. You've survived. And you know a lot of things. You're a senior. You're not just old. You know, back in 1900, many years ago, people only lived to around 40 years old. That was how old you were expected to live. Today, the average age that we're supposed to live to is 80 years old. But we know many people live beyond 80 now. And many people are reaching 100 years old. And you know, the idea of getting old, of old age, that depends on where you live. Here in Canada, Ontario, Toronto, it means one thing. But if you go way up north to Nunavut, where I've done a lot of work, Older people aren't called seniors. They're not even called old. They're called elders. Elders are considered to have great wisdom. And they are treated with great respect. Many other societies around the world have great respect for elders, for people who are older. Now, I'm sad to say that in our society, we are really focused on youth, on young people. I have nothing against young people, but it's something that we really focus on. We don't, I think, although this is changing now, give the same respect to elders as they do in many other societies. As we get older, things start to happen. Your health can go down, deteriorate, you get aches, pains, your vision might start to go, even hearing that you have would go down. The most important thing probably is your memory starts to go down. Everybody notices that you can't remember things that you used to be able to remember. Also, you may not be able to live independently anymore. Why? Do you remember to turn off the stove? Can you do your own laundry? Many, many things are required to live independently, and sometimes, as you get older, these things go away. Money, handle money. Will I have enough money? Will I have to move out of my home? Where will I live? These are issues that confront many seniors out there. What about my family and friends? Sometimes family move away. You're not near your family. Friends are starting to pass away. You find yourself going to funerals pretty often. Sometimes you become socially isolated. All of these things can lead to mental health problems, or just not feeling good. Maybe feeling anxious, having trouble sleeping, just feeling down, or sometimes even more serious depression. All of these things about getting older are, are real, but we can make sure that people can be helped that these realities do not result in serious mental health problems. And even if they do cause a problem, there are ways that we can help. Them. 
many people that get older, seniors yourself, have survived a long life, have had a good life, and intend to go on even longer. Growing old with a positive attitude serves as an inspiration for everybody. And it gives us great hope. So we've got a lot to learn from you, from seniors, from deaf seniors, about how to get old gracefully and with a positive attitude. Now what I've been saying is true of all seniors, not just deaf. And I think having a positive attitude, I first learned that uh, from my mother, my deaf mother, who spent the last <laughs> few years of her life, life right here in, in the residence. And she lived to 87 years old. And you know, some of her last words to me, when she was up in the bed, I was there, Reverend Rumble was right beside me, and she said, I'm ready to go. I had a good life. And then she said, thank you. She was very fortunate in many ways. She had a lot of good luck. And good luck sometimes is very important. There are things that we don't control in life. Things that happen that are good, things that happen are bad. My mother was very lucky, and she felt she was lucky. And she inspired me, and my father did too. So for many people, getting older has a very special significance. As you get older, sometimes you start to think about your early life, when you were really young, your family. And especially for deaf people, thinking about school and what happened at school. Unfortunately, for many deaf people in this position, that school experience was not very good. <coughs> and sometimes the family experience was not very good. Hearing parents often could not communicate with their own children. Children were forbidden to use sign language forced to learn to speak. For some deaf children, this worked well. But for many, it was a disaster. <coughs> Why do <coughs> seniors, deaf seniors, why do we all think about what happened in our early life? Well, for deaf people, it's because, in many cases, there was a kind of an early trauma. Not being able to communicate was traumatic. It could leave a permanent mental scar, a scar that keeps with you right to the end of your days. This communication issue can become a huge issue for deaf seniors, especially if they don't live in big cities like Toronto, if they live in small communities, one deaf person in a community. Where are the services for those deaf people? Can they be served by somebody that knows sign language? If a deaf senior tries to, re to remain independent at home, Will they get services that work for them? Or will they have a trauma again, just like the trauma they had when they went to school? Being in a situation where people can't communicate, where they can't communicate. Here at uh, Bob Rumble Center, we do have services and an approach that are very well suited to the communication needs of, of seniors. But in many places in Ontario, in Canada, all over the country, there are no services like this. This lack of services can lead to mental health issues. We can have 
isolation, depression, and some places we've heard of deaf people even wanting to or actually taking their own lives as an act of desperation. This doesn't happen very often, fortunately, but it can be a risk for people that are isolated out in communities all alone. If the appropriate services, including sign language and an understanding of deaf people, aren't made more widely available, we can have serious mental health issues for deaf seniors living in isolation. The good news is that all governments right now, local governments, the province, <coughs> Ontario, Canadian government, they care about seniors. They're putting a priority on seniors. And there's also a big priority on mental health and wellness. So the governments recognize that there are a lot of seniors they recognize that mental health can be an issue, so they're trying to do something. <clears throat> okay, if we want to do something about mental health, maybe we should look at what does the word mental mean? And what does the word health mean? How is physical health? different from mental health. If I have a sore back, and I'm in a lot of pain, <coughs> is that physical health, or is it mental health? There may be something physically wrong with my spine, my back, but the pain is in my mind. The pain itself is mental. It's what I feel. It's real. It's as real as whatever is wrong with my spine. What we feel in the case of a back pain has a lot to do with the nerves that go up your back and go to your brain, a lot of complicated things. But in the end, what you feel is pain. And that's a mental thing. So mental sometimes means just what you feel, what you feel. Here it's the pain, but you may feel good, you may feel bad, you may feel depressed, you may feel anxious, you may feel bored, you may feel funny, you may feel jealous. We can experience a lot of different feelings. Every time you feel something, something is happening in your mind or in your brain. We don't completely understand what happens in our mind and our brain. We know a lot more now than we did a hundred years ago, but there's a lot that we just don't understand. A lot of scientists are studying the mind, studying the brain, try to help us understand more. But there's a lot we don't understand. So when we're talking about mental health, we are talking about how we feel, but we're also talking about our physical health, our general health, especially what is happening in our brain. If you have a headache, bad headache, migraine, you can take a pill sometimes. It affects your brain and the pain goes away <coughs> for a little while and, <coughs> and it might come back. And sometimes when you're just not feeling good, there's a special pill you can take. It affects your brain and it makes you feel better again. Again, maybe for just a little while. But sometimes that pill doesn't work at all. And sometimes that pill can make you feel worse. So it's very complicated. It's important to know that 
how you feel can be changed just by communicating. Communicating with a doctor, with a psychologist like myself, with a counselor, with a friend, or with anyone who knows and works with you. Sometimes you can make yourself feel better by just taking a positive attitude, by playing a game, a social game, taking a trip, watching a movie, or just taking a nice walk, or even eating a special treat. Different people can control their own mental health, their own sense of feeling good, of well-being, all by themselves. One thing we know for sure is that being social and communicating with other people is very important. Now, I know that for active young people, some of these activities I talked about, going out for a walk, doing things, they work well. But for seniors, and maybe especially for deaf seniors, it's more difficult. You may have a health problem, a problem with your heart. You may have a problem with mobility, getting around. You may have a problem breathing. You may have a hard time remembering things. You may have trouble sleeping. You may have social problems with friends or staff. You like one person. You don't like another person. You may feel some people are picking on you or just ignoring you. And sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. These are all normal feelings. We all experience these feelings many times. These feelings, these health issues, they're real, and they change over time as you get older. Sometimes you can get over them, sometimes you can feel better, and sometimes not. Sometimes your problems just keep on going, and it's hard to get feeling better. And they become long-term problems. Realistically, we have to say that we can't solve every problem that everybody has. But we can solve many problems. We know for sure that a lot can be done to have all seniors, especially deaf seniors and all of us, to have a long and a fulfilling life. As I mentioned earlier, even for more serious mental health issues such as anxiety or depression, we know of many treatments and activities that can help us. And special conditions such as Alzheimer's disease or dementia, they deserve special consideration. And we will discuss Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and other mental health issues in our next presentation. The main thing, I think, is getting the right help. We need skilled and experienced mental health professionals who not only understand mental illness, but also understand deaf people and special needs of deaf seniors. And communication is very, very important. People need to be able to communicate directly or work well with interpreters. Now, we know that all the doctors and all the other professional people, most of them can't sign. Most of them don't know much about deaf people. But these people can learn about deaf people, about sign language, about what our special needs are. And in that way, we can let them help us. They have special knowledge, but they have to learn about deaf people. And we can teach them, and you can teach them, and we can share our experiences, and we need those people. We need mental health professionals who are themselves deaf. We need doctors, psychologists, counselors, social workers who are deaf themselves, who have experienced deafness. They are very important. We need the helpers and staff who are not necessarily mental health professionals. They have a very important role to play. The people on the front line, 
as many are here right now. They're interacting every day, every minute with deaf seniors. The role of staff and helpers, very important. So we all have a role to play. We can help each other. Deaf and hearing people can help each other. And deaf people have a long history of helping each other that started back in the schools for the deaf. I heard many stories from my mother and my father about deaf people helping deaf people. This continues right up to the senior years. And it's a very important part of any program approach to make sure that we have well-being and good mental health for all of us, all deaf seniors. Each one of us has a special role to play. Each person in this situation has something special to offer. And deaf seniors deserve the same respect that elders have, deserve great respect. The staff that work with deaf seniors also deserve great respect. The key here is for us all to work together as a team. There's no one right way to deal with the mental health issues that come as we get older. <clears throat> There's a lot we don't understand, but we learn from each other every day. Everybody learns from everybody. Now, that's the little background that we have, and we hope to move forward next day with talking about, again, some of the serious mental health issues, but also we're going to give some practical ideas about feeling good, about wellness that I think will be important for all of us. We're going to talk about what the different doctors, counselors, professionals, <coughs> social workers, staff, everybody, what everybody has to contribute. And I'll say more about it. And I'm going to talk about some of the therapy approaches that are used. One of them is called mindfulness. A very interesting new approach that is helping a lot of people and so I'm going to talk about that next day. There's something else called cognitive behavioral therapy. It's a special kind of therapy that helps a lot of people and I'm going to explain what it is. Another one is called narrative therapy. I guess we need it to. And I'm going to explain it. So I'm going to explain Mindfulness, cognitive behavioral therapy, narrative therapy, and a number of other approaches. So you know something about what people are doing to help people that have mental health issues. Then in the, in the third <coughs> presentation, we're going to talk about our Rumble Wellness Wheel. We have a lot of ideas about activities, most of which are already being done, but we're going to talk about it more. Things that we can do to make us feel better, to ensure our mental health and sense of wellness and well-being.